Hey guys, Ivan here, and this video we're gonna start with a guest posing of Keon Pearson, who looks absolutely amazing, who looks really freaking big right now, really 3D and bubbly, and uh, no, he's not gonna be doing classic physique, it was already confirmed, if you guys didn't hear in my last video, Guy Cisternino, who is uh, very good friends with Keon, said that Keon is still gonna be competing in 212, which is obvious which is apparent. And it's interesting that Kian already said that he's gonna be going back to classic physique naturally and what happened is he went off the cycle and it didn't feel nice, it felt horrible. As you guys who are on understand what I'm talking about, uh, once you start using, you never really go back, it's really mentally tough, it's addictive, it's really addictive and uh, apparently Kian didn't make it, he got back on full-blown cycles and now he looks Full blown, he looks really freaking big. And the question really is can he win the 212 Mr. Olympia? Someday, eventually, most likely, he will. But the question is this year can he do it this year? Maybe, maybe he can. Look, I mean, Derek Lansford really brought it last year when he won that Mr. Olympia. I don't think his conditioning was better than that of Sean Clarida, but he has such an amazing frame, really beautiful physique, great aesthetics, and he was really freaking big, like he barely made it to 212. As I heard, he was really struggling to make that weight, somehow he managed, but now in the offseason it looks like he has grown even more. So will he try and, and somehow squeeze into the 212 again? I don't think he will want to, I mean, he won the show once, should he suffer like crazy again and again uh, to repeat the victory, or should he go to the to the ultimate category, the open bodybuilding, where he can be competitive, as we, as we have seen, uh, the other 212 top Olympians have won pro shows in the open, Sean Clarida, Angel Calderon, and also William Bonek uh, came from 212, also Hari Chupan, so these, uh, these 212 guys, the top 212 guys, when they make the transition and when they try really hard, they do really well in the open, so I think Derek is gonna go over there. As far as Sean, he's already qualified for the open, he can go if he wants. He can be competitive, even though he's like 5 foot tall, he can still do well. We'll see what he's gonna decide, but can Keon beat him? Well, Sean doesn't have the pretty shape like Keon does, but he does have that crazy maturity. He is also very complete and he is really, really hard working and, and I'm sure that he's gonna be much better this year than last year. I just don't know which division he will do, but whichever he does, it's gonna be crazy. Look at this guy, so he is squatting as heavy as Chris Bumstead. And he is much, much lighter, much smaller than Chris. I just googled it and Sean Clarida is 5 foot 1. So he's a, he's a tiny man. And he is still a really freaking strong. Look at it, this is 6 plates, guys. 6 plates on a Smith machine. This is crazy. So you can see this guy is working really, really hard. And it shows on his physique. He has such an amazing physique, pound for pound. And Keon might be bigger, like, frame-wise, but will he have that freak factor, that maturity, the details, you know, that, that Sean has? I don't know. But I think I would bet on Sean, honestly. I think he has more maturity, more freak factor. Uh, Keon is really blessed as far as uh, the aesthetics, you know, small waist, great vacuum, pretty shape, but this guy has that gnarly physique, and that is bodybuilding, so if he doesn't go to the open, and I think he shouldn't, because he can really, he has a lot of room to grow in 212, and uh, I don't think he's gonna be reaching a weight cap anytime soon, if ever, uh, because of his height, so he should definitely stay in 212, and if he does, I don't think Kian can beat him, not this year. Kian is definitely one of the most aesthetic bodybuilders in, in bodybuilding today, like in all divisions, classic included. But how much does that help in bodybuilding, I mean in 212, I wouldn't say it helps much. But it definitely helps with the fan base. I personally am a huge fan of Kion's physique and I can't wait to see him shredded on stage in 212 again. I think he has a good chance of being top 2, top 3 at the Mr. Olympia in 212 uh, this year.
Next, we have a guest posing, another guest posing of the fourth place Mr. Olympia finisher Hunter Labrada. Uh, eight months, about eight months out of Mr. Olympia, and he's at a great point right now. He's fairly lean and he's really like big and full. Uh, he just has like a layer of water, a little bit of fat. And it looks like a great point for 8 months out. And uh, now he's about 270 something right now. So he isn't really pushing the weight too much. And he talked about this before. He doesn't even want to grow anymore. He wants to maintain his waist size and to add little details here and there. Uh, does he need to make improvements? Sure. And will he make them? I think he will, even if he doesn't push like the 300 pound mark. And we talked about this before, uh, if you guys watch my channel. Basically, some bodybuilders, they max out their, their frames as far as muscularity. And then they, they're not perfect, so they want to improve on that. And how do they approach this? Uh, they approach it by growing more. They get bigger and bigger in the off season. And what happens is certain muscle grow, but there are other body parts that shouldn't grow, that grow like waistline. And that is the problem that, that uh, Hunter doesn't want to have. Basically, his waistline is fine right now. It has grown over the years, but if he really pushed his weight uh, up to like over 300 pounds now, it will probably ruin his physique. So at this point, it's probably smarter to stay at a little bit lower weight, so you don't have to push the food like a maniac and really stretch your stomach and just grow everywhere and grow your waistline, grow your stomach. So he should definitely stay a little bit smaller, not small, but smaller than what he could be, and try to add uh, those small details, you know, to fine polish his physique. And it seems like Hunter doesn't want to make the same mistakes so many bodybuilders have done. And I think his approach is great. And even if he doesn't add another 10, 20 pounds in this year before the Mr. Olympia, I still believe he's going to be much better on that stage. And can he beat Nick Walker again, who is 300 pounds, about 300 pounds right now? We'll see. It's definitely going to be a great battle, great rivalry. All right, next we have Regan Grimes with a physique update in the offseason. This guy is complete opposite of Hunter Labrada. He doesn't need to find polish his physique. He needs to freaking grow. He needs those 10, 15, 20 pounds of muscle, of stage weight. He needs it. Uh, should he be bigger right now in the offseason? Well, no, because he competed. If he didn't compete, if he kept uh, doing his off-season, he would be bigger now. So that Arnold Classic, that entire prep, didn't really bring him anything. It, if anything, it hurt him. Because before that, he, I think he won um, Kuwait Pro or something like that. He did a couple of post-Olympia shows and he placed really well. He was in top 2, top 3. And now he did the Arnold, he was I think 7th out of 9 competitors and pretty much the same thing happened at Boston Pro. So this definitely hurt his momentum. It really didn't bring him anything good. He needs to grow, man. He needs the off-season. Look at him here. Some people are saying that he was uh, better, maybe a tiny bit, but, you know, he was pretty much the same. Uh, this is one of the photos from the prep, and a lot of people thought that he made some serious muscle gains. Like Ian Valier here, he said big improvements muscularity-wise. And if you guys follow my channel at that time, I was disagreeing with Ian. I said I didn't see any crazy improvement, any big improvements. Like, maybe a tiny little bit, his posing was better here, but other than that, this is the same Regan Grimes we are, we are seeing year after year after year, and he's still like one of the, he's not top 10 Olympian, no, he needs more muscle to be a top 10 Olympian. Looking at this photo from Arnold Classic, because of uh, him being sick during the prep, he wasn't able to really shred down all the fat and to be really conditioned. But So he would look bigger, right? I mean, if he, if he didn't die down completely, he should be bigger. But really, this is the same Regan Grimes we are seeing every year. There is no big change here. So he needs uh, at least a full year off or, or two years. If I was him, if this was my career, if I was making money out of bodybuilding... I would take two years off and really try to grow, uh, even if he doesn't like it. I don't care if he likes it. I mean, that's what he needs to do if he wants to be a good bodybuilder. If he wants to be a top 15 in the world and stay like that for the rest of his career, sure. I mean, that's fine. It's good. But he, if he wants to be like top 6 Olympian, and he has the potential, he has the tools, 
He needs a good off season where he's not gonna feel nice, where he's gonna feel uncomfortable all the time. And if he actually goes through that, and if he does that, if he sacrifices the one or two years, he can be a top Olympian. I'm telling you guys. What do you guys think? A lot of guest posings. We also have Urs Kalecinski, who competed recently, so he stayed in a great shape until FIBO in Germany. And look at this guy. I mean, he was huge and he was still shredded. He looks really freaking amazing. And now, of course, he competed recently, so it wasn't really much of a trouble for him to maintain conditioning. And, you know, he came fuller, bigger, so it looks even more impressive, really. It wouldn't look that impressive on stage against the other shredded competitors, but look at him here, uh, next to a, and probably an amateur competitor. It's night and day difference. This is really, this is, this looks amazing. Look at the legs. I mean, look at his upper body. People are criticizing him for his uh, uh, smaller upper body, but now look at him here. I mean, look, look at him against uh, the amateurs. So look at his glutes. They are freaking more shredded than probably any other competitor in this show. But surely, soon after this uh, guest posing in this event, he will lose this conditioning as he should. He needs to grow as well. He needs to grow that upper body. Legs? No, no. Legs are fine. Legs are good enough. He needs to grow a little bit more that upper body and he might challenge even Chris Bumstead. Who knows? Alright, the next thing is very interesting. Uh, it's probably not for all of you guys that are watching this channel. Some of you are interested in this topic, some of you aren't. So I put this topic at the end of this video. If you guys want to listen to this, then stay tuned. Uh, this is a JP or Jordan Peters. This guy is like 5 foot 5 and 300 pounds at his, at his best. He's incredibly strong. He never really turned pro, but he has like the strength and the muscle of, of a top pro, of one of the biggest pros in the world. And he discussed something very controversial here in this video. Uh, it looks like something that we don't really see every day. Uh, I usually, look, I'm surrounded by amateurs and some of the top amateurs I heard are taking really big dosages. And when I listen to the top pros, like from the Mr. Olympia, they are all saying that they're not really using a lot. And I get it, like some guys have great genetics and they don't have to use a lot, but many of them that are on the top probably are using a lot more than we can imagine uh, based on what JP says here. So basically, I'm gonna read a couple of interesting parts. If you guys wanna check out the whole thing, go to his Instagram, trained by JP and check it out. But these are the interesting parts here. So he starts by saying that in 2017 he made this video that if you really want to get big, big, you need at least 700 mg of Primo. And he says that it is entirely impossible to get legit big running 300 to 400 mg a week. And this part is very interesting for me. He says that uh, he is friends with most of the Olympians and they chat about these things a lot. And it's something on all their minds trying to juggle health because they know how to get legit big. You have to push. And why I find this very interesting, it's because, as I said before, guys, I talk to, like, top amateurs. And they're all saying that to get really big, you need to use a lot. And this is, this is usually what, uh, you know, top open pros are saying is it's not true. And now, JP is saying that he's friends with most top Olympians. And they agree that if he wants to get really big, you need to push things. You need to risk your health. You know, and not by just being big and eating a lot, but by taking more, taking a lot of gear. The next part is also very interesting. He says, uh, if someone is trying to tell you that you can get legit big on these baby doses, they clearly haven't ever been big and strong themselves. And he says, big and strong by my standards. And, you know, his standards are really high. Like, he's really big and strong. So there you go. I mean, this guy opens up and he tells us as it is. If you, unless you are super, super genetically blessed, you need to use big doses, like seriously big doses. How big doses? Well, that's the next part, and I find this uh, the most interesting here, because it's really rare to, to hear these, uh, well, he isn't a, really a pro, he doesn't have a pro card, but he, I would, I would call him a professional bodybuilder, because he does bodybuilding for a living, and he's just as big as the other, probably bigger than most, like top Olympians. He doesn't have like the prettiest structure, he has a really bad waist, so he never really turned pro, but he is a good bodybuilder, man. So he says, uh, now if I could... 
So he says, now if I could have redone things, I wouldn't have pushed 3, 4, 5 grams. As that, in my opinion, is not needed by anyone. But to get big, you are going to still have to do uh, 1.5 to 2, 2 grams uh, per week. So guys, JP, Jordan Peters, pushed up to 5 freaking grams. That's 5,000 milligrams of gear per week. And I wouldn't be surprised if he lied a little bit, if he used a little bit more than that. I know, it's kind of lame that he opened up and that he told us openly that he was using 5 grams of gear uh, per week and uh, I'm saying here that he's lying. <laughs> but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm probably joking, I don't know, maybe he actually did use more. Because I know a guy from Balkans over here who is an IBB pro, who is much taller than Jordan and much bigger of course because of height, who as I heard was using 5 grams of testosterone only uh, per week. And who knows what else on top of that. Uh, like, and I also heard uh, 150 units of insulin per, per day. So, you know, take it or leave it. That's what I heard. And now you have Jordan Peters uh, opening up and telling us that he talks to top Olympians and they are agreeing with him that you really need to push things if you want to get this big. So I thought this was very interesting. I found it very interesting. I don't know if you guys are uh, if you guys are interested in these kind of things. If you are, tell me in the comment section down below if you're still here and watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. For more bodybuilding stuff like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.